you. Okay. How are you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Welcome aboard. Guys ready? Yeah. Okay, we'll call to order the meeting of January 5th, 2017 for the Planning Commissioner. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance will be done by Commissioner Heaty. Ready? Again. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Commissioner Heaty? Here. Commissioner McLaughlin? Here. Commissioner Padilla? Here. Vice Chair Dunstan is absent. Chair Mercado? Here. Uh, do we have any reordering of the agenda? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to move up the uh, planning uh, director's report to before this because I have to recuse myself from the other item on the agenda. Okay. So we'll go to uh, approval of minutes. A planning commission meeting December 15th. Do we have a motion? Make a motion that we approve them as written. A second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstained. Okay. Uh, we have no public cons comments, no consent calendar, no continued public hearings, and we'll go to planning director report. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Got a lot of projects uh, coming in, so you guys are going to be quite busy in the next uh, few months. The Commons is back in, and we're going to, the environmental studies are being completed. Live Oak Lanes, the environmental studies are completed, and we're, and we're working on the environmental documents. So we're looking at April, Andrea? Yeah. Somewhere around April for a public hearing for that, that project. Yeah. Um, we have two industrial projects submitted by Gavin Moores, one on the old Racket Club property and then one on the old Bowling Alley property and you'll see that at your next Planning Commission meeting as an official preliminary review. So those are actually in for processing. The Avenue of Flags specific plan will be going to Council next week for direction. So if they give positive direction, we'll do the environmental, finish up the plan and bring it to the Planning Commission for a recommendation. And we're hoping in spring to complete that process. Marijuana is, is legal now, recreational. However, the city can regulate storefront businesses and prohibit them or allow them whatever and the council is going to make direction next week on where they want to go with it and they're going to do an urgency ordinance first so we don't have any commercial establishments put in and then direct staff on what uh, ordinance to move forward with and it'll be a zoning ordinance amendment so the planning commission will get to see whether it's prohibition whether there's regulations etc and council make that determination and then the city attorney will process an ordinance through the commission and up to the council mark i thought the city already had it uh, medical marijuana okay metal, so we're, yeah, this is recreational okay. so that's now that that's legal then okay we'll see so that, we'll, the original or the existing ordinance addresses just medical marijuana that's correct, and that's, pretty, yeah, and that's okay. prohibited, so we'll, we'll see where the City Council wants to go on that. And February is the 25th anniversary of incorporation, so there'll be several, couple events going on. One, there'll be an open house at City Hall on February 1st from 3 to 5, and then where the state of the city is going to focus on our 25th anniversary, and that's on February 21st at the Marriott, and the chamber will have tickets available for that. So I encourage everybody to to attend that. And uh, uh, that's it uh, for my report. Okay. Uh, then we will go to other business which is the conceptual review of the Hartman 246 commercial project. You want to say? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I need to recuse myself because of my ownership in Rancho de Maria and it's within 500 feet of the subject's uh, property. Great. Do we okay. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon, Dan. All right. That was a quick one. Yeah. Thanks for him, coming. I told him 10. That's usually my job, five. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. We'll have it. Andrea presented. We'll have another one to step down on in the next meeting as well. So. I think, yeah, but I get to talk about one of the two on the old, old bowling alley site, but not on the, the that's one behind. Yeah, and that's the one that right I'll be off on. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> Small.
small town. It is a small Musical town. Musical chairs. That's all right. <laughs> All right, well, good evening, Chair Mercado, Commissioners. Uh, this is the conceptual review for what we're calling the uh, Hartman Highway 246 commercial project. Um, it's located um, along Highway 246, just in between Ellens to the uh, west and the Shell gas station to the east. Um, it's uh, six parcels, and it's all parcels are zoned uh, general commercial at this point. Um, however, the, these parcels are included in, in the future Avenue of Flag specific plan. So um, basically, the regulations that would apply would be the, the regulations that are in place at the time of project comp or project completion. So depending on when that occurs and when the plan, the specific plan gets adopted, that those would be the regulations that would apply. That would be application completeness. Yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, the project is for two commercial buildings. Um, so here's the 246 up here in the Avenue of Flags here. Um, it's for two commercial buildings. Um, one is 10,500 square feet as proposed, and one is the other is 5,000 square feet. Um, they don't really know exactly the specific uses at this point, but they would conform to whatever commercial zone regulations are in place at the time. Uh, also included is a central plaza area here, and um, some outdoor seating <coughs> is included for each unit and area of the project. Uh, also, p potential uh, gourmet food trucks to be parked on site. They're showing four here, and also parking to support the use uh, these uses. So we haven't staff hasn't reviewed the plans for conformance with the municipal code, so they would need to be sure that they provide enough parking for the uses that are proposed um, in these each in individual commercial buildings. There's also two new um, access points <coughs> <coughs> proposed, one along the Avenue of Flags and one over here along the Highway 246. So again, staff hasn't reviewed the plans for compliance with the municipal code. Uh, this is because this is a conceptual review only, um, but uh, we do have a, several, just a few comments just looking at the site plan that's been provided. So um, one is that there is an existing sewer, city sewer main somewhere around here, I believe, um, but the, the part, part of the building is, as proposed, is covering it. So the applicant would have the option of either re replacing putting the sewer main in an alternative place or uh, adjusting the building's location to accommodate that. Um, let's see. Uh, also, just to note here, this bridge, there's a bridge proposed as part of the project to connect um, the Avenue of Flags to, and Highway 246 through the project, and it does go over Zaka Creek, so they would need to provide the appropriate studies and obtain the, the needed permits to allow for this bridge. However, it can be designed to not abut the creek area, so they would just need to obtain the appropriate permits for that. Um, also, there is, uh, Caltrans is coming this month, I believe, to do street frontage improvements with street trees and decorative sidewalks, so the applicant may have to move these covered patio areas back a little bit. I'm, it wasn't clear, but it's a possibility with those improvements that are coming in. Uh, and for this project, it would be a final development plan that would be required. Uh, so, so that would be, but at this point, it's just a conceptual review, but if they were to formally submit, that would be the requirement. Um, also, currently, the bike and pedestrian master plan shows a trail that, that goes probably about here, I believe, through the project site. However, staff is still pondering the idea of connecting it from above the north through Pea Soup Andersons along, um, maybe I can show you with this here. So it comes down through Pea Soup Andersons and currently it shows it coming through the project site, but we're still pondering the idea of, uh, this would be a mid-block crossing, so we don't, that's not necessarily a good thing. So we are pondering the idea of connecting it through the, the intersection here and reconnecting along the Avenue of Flags. So 
Um, and at this point, uh, Mr. Hartman is just seeking initial input from the Planning Commission and whether or not this type of a project would have the Planning Commission's support. And that's all I have. Okay. Do you have any questions for staff at this time? Yeah, a couple. Okay. Do and, and again, we've never dealt with food trucks since I've been on the, on the commission. Do we need to address parking needs for food trucks when they're? Per, as it looks like it's a permanent feature of this. Would that need to be addressed at some point? That's something we will definitely take a look at. Just because you're right, we haven't really addressed uh, uh, permanent food trucks or or even temporary ones coming into a particular site. Right. So we could factor that in. Okay, I was curious about that. Then the use of that. It said that it was. It's it's just commercial at this point. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not specific. It could be clothing stores or it could be bike shops. Right, or retail restaurant. Retail restaurant. Maybe, okay. Yeah, not there's nothing specific provided. And then, at and then the the space that was at the at the far east of the project. Project is proposed a 10,000 square foot retail restaurant. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that the idea there? So there is a restaurant as as, as planned there. That issue is 5,000. Oh, wait, wait till you, you, you get the microphone. Okay. You, you'll be oh, able to talk. Okay, so, but that, that's specific. Okay, cool. And then so then the the other access to the project comes off of 246 there between the shell station mm -hmm. where there's now that little there's a dr kind of a busted up driveway and all actually there's a parcel in between the shell station and this site and, okay oh is there yeah so that's where the that's access where we, point. that's where the city has an easement in through there don't they of some sort oh. no it's a little more um yeah i don't think we have a no it, the, there's like a few, like they're utility they're right. the yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Working. Working. Um, are they eligible for a mixed use on, on this zoning? Could there be a residential component? There could be mixed use on this because it's allowed in the CR zone. However, I don't think this would be a good site for residential just because it's location along uh, Highway 246 and some of the other uses. So I, I just don't think it's a good candidate for it, but can they do it? Yes, the, yes they could. Okay. Um, and would the, having the two access points on the access point coming out to 246, that would have open access through the Shell station? Um, no, because uh, if you can put the other uh, yeah. one up, that because it does not connect to Shell. There's a parcel in between right okay. there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And has are there any concerns with making additional cuts onto 246 in terms of traffic safety? Well, that will be addressed uh, when we get the official application, and Caltrans will weigh in along with okay. uh, the city engineer Rose Hess. Okay. Right. And then you're pondering, or the city is pondering, relocating a potential bike path? What does pondering so mean? Currently in the uh, bike and ped master plan, mm -hmm. like I mentioned, there's part of the, the trail connects through that project site. So we're looking at possibly moving it anyway, irrespective of the project, just because of um, safety issues with the mid-block crossing. So. But that doesn't preclude if we wanted to have the path go through the site so people coming on the south side of 246 walking could cut through to, to get to the Avenue of Flags. So that's a possibility. But for people coming north down the Zach Creek Trail, we don't want them crossing at mid-block. We want them going to the intersection, and they're not going to come back to catch the trail. They're just going to go down the Avenue of Flags to catch it and continue. Yeah. So again, something will be looking at as part of the application process and which works best for uh, the needs of the, the city. And there is a, maybe it's not a zoning question, but just is there a need for additional retail space? On to, like how do these spaces differ from what currently exists next to Albertsons? We don't, for planning purposes, we don't go to into the business model of people. If they come through okay. with the project, we look at it strictly as is it going to impact the city as far as traffic, water, okay. things like that. But we don't get into, at this point, whether the business is viable or not. That we leave up to the, the private businesses. 
Anything else? Okay. Let's hear from them. Yeah. All right. Then we'll have the applicant come up and address. Hi, Glenn Hartman here. Thank you, Andrea. You did a very nice job, and you've been very helpful to work with uh, in our initial review of this project. Uh, we we had some elevations uh, that we had provided, but I, I guess did, did we discuss that you didn't? Yeah, we, we didn't just bring them out. The elevations that showed just purely wine business, mm -hmm. and you had indicated that right. you, know, you didn't know at this point what if it would be what the mix of commercial uses would be. Right, that. right. So, so. our our to, to talk to uh, your comment about the type of uses, uh, the, d the demand that we've had for the project has been uh, where, where we've exposed it through our leasing uh, folks. We've, we've had quite a bit of demand for uh, wine tasting uh, facilities and um, that the, the project has been uh, designed to, would, would be designed to accommodate uh, uh, the smaller wine tasting um, winery tenant, and uh, that's why really it's 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 designed such as that 10,500 foot building with the trellis trellises along the front of 246. Uh, it's really a double fronted uh, retail, so the idea was uh, that that uh, we would have be able to have. Um, uh, glass and seating uh, facing to the south in, in into into this area <clears throat> right there okay. so uh, that's that's really our primary design concept and um, I, I, I wish we would have we, we did some preliminary elevations that I think are really uh, really good and again, with a, a, a long lines of a, a wine-related retail uses and more of an entertainment uh, retail concept, really that would take advantage of the um, amount of people that are their overnight guest uh, behind at the uh, at the Flags Resort. Andersons across the street and and try to really allow for some walking traffic that, that could utilize uh, our, our spaces here uh, so that that's that's the concept in, in general what the comments the the feedback that we were hoping to get as far as as far as our access to 246 there, there's Three commercial buildings there right now, as you're well aware, uh, the old Mexican restaurant and the other two buildings. Uh, so they, all, all three of those buildings, have direct access to 246 right now. So we'd actually be um, limiting uh, from the current project the access to 246 down to one site, and and we were. Pretty excited about the be able to, the the ability of this design to be able to uh, enhance the circulation. Uh, I think it really, really, uh, really turns out nice. Uh, but but the in in order to do that, we need to be able to cross Saka Creek uh, in, in this location right here. So. Right, right there. There's actually there's a little head wall. Right now, Zaka Creek is covered from there to the north, going under 246, and then all covered all the way, of course, through Andersons. And really, the from my discussions with Mark, the the current uh, city design standards is not to cover Zaka Creek anymore, mm -hmm. uh, but because of this tight site, uh, we, looking at it, in, in order to accommodate our uh, traffic flow, we need about 27 feet of overhang over Zaka Creek, and that's a, that's what we're showing there. So that 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 is a that is a an accommodation. It could be a bridge. It could be 
it could be just an extension of the existing structure there that's now that you can go and see. And, and if it, I can yeah, go ahead. chip in on, yeah. on that as well, we think it it adds to the site to do that to get the circulation because we do like the buildings up along the street i mean that's where they're not probably going to be subject to the avenue specific plan that's one of the key components is get street frontage and get the buildings up there and get the parking and the stuff behind if we didn't allow the extension over the, the creek i don't think they'd be able to pretty much do that design that they're they're proposing at this time it, so it really was so that that's a critical function and it's not us. covering the whole yeah. creek it's just covering a little extending a little bit that's already covered all the way across the street and farther up onto to pea soups property so right. uh, we think it's a design feature we can work with and i think the city engineer is if right. thinks it's it's doable as well right they'd still have to obtain permits either way you know whichever design um through fishing game and things like that but it, you know as far as our process it's something that we would find acceptable and so in reality the business is really facing south the the street frontage on 246 will just probably be decorative and the access is all going to probably happen from behind correct i think that it that is that is exactly the function i mean it it could be uh, we, we a lot of retailers don't like to have a double entrance of uh -huh. course uh but but we've we've had it work in other places and i think that it could they they could we could provide entrances off off the sidewalk on 246 and then allow you, their customers to come through to a seating area all the way in the back will there also. be curb parking there in front of us <laughs> no no curb no. so there's no curb there's no parking. curb parking on 246 there 246. is on I, Avenue. i didn't think Fox. so i'm trying to yeah. visualize that yeah. you know I, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of no parking signs yeah exactly yeah. well so good yeah. so so it does force them to park in the back and really enter. Does, yeah. so the person that un enters from that side would be the person coming from the walking trail or someone coming from anderson's across the street exactly so so their entrance is probably 95 percent or 99 percent from the parking lot yeah as far as people driving to the site absolutely yeah. you know again so we're hoping we're place. hoping to be able to utilize yeah. you know the walk it stretch the legs they, they can walk yeah to the extent we can as far as the parking goes uh we're we're quite a bit in excess of uh, the parking that would be required for just retail. So our um, anticipation is to accommodate some boutique restaurant uses and and uh, wine tasting type of uses that that would that would require more parking than standard retail, and, and we've accommodated that. Absolutely. But what so. about um, lighting and outside seating and that kind of thing? So, our 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 thoughts are that that courtyard area, that triangle courtyard area there, would be uh, a, an outdoor kind of entertainment courtyard. We haven't, you know, thought it through completely yet. But the concept of uh, being able to introduce some gourmet food truck type of uses uh, we've seen it incorporated soup it's it's very successful in in downtown Los Angeles right now with some of the food truck food court where where you have more than one in an area and uh, especially if if that's combined with some boutique restaurant uses uh, and the wine tasting is it's a very natural thing to be able to provide some uh, food truck uses so mm -hmm. that's that's the thinking there what about, what about public restrooms and all that each individual unit will have them or we were still looking into the, the thought of we it, it might be better for this type of project and if we continue to uh, see the demand that, that we're seeing from other winery uh, related uses I think it it may be beneficial for us to probably aggregate restrooms and, and create a public restroom space within the buildings uh, so we're gonna we're gonna look at that it's not not done yet I, it may be uh, actually much more efficient use of uh, restroom space than trying to do um, a single 
restroom space now that has to be handicapped, mm -hmm. uh, you know, starts to eat up a tremendous amount of area because these these units are designed to only you know they're 20 by 50 units yeah, or a thousand, thousand feet. It's pretty yeah. small. So uh, I, ideally, I, I think that we and, and it's something we're going to need to work with planning staff on mm -hmm. is to how big that public restroom area could be and how, how that's going to be. So we just haven't gotten there yet. And in our code, do we have language for tasting rooms in terms of their classification? Like, do we know that they're classified as retail? They're classified as retail, and that's how we, we govern the parking. Okay. So we, we're, we're, we're thinking that we're going to overpark per your code. Sure. But I think it would be our code. That's, that's what we're going to need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then one other thing, you did receive a letter from uh, Peggy Briarton regarding okay. some issues. And the, the one point you did bring up that maybe the frontage, I know there's single-story buildings, to maybe have some higher and taller vertical elements to make it a little taller frontage along the street just sure. to get some yeah. variety. And I think that was a good point that, mm -hmm. that she brought up. That, mm -hmm. But uh, she did, she hasn't seen our preliminary that's elevation. That's correct. Right. Correct. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I got a couple. Of them. Go ahead. I'm just curious because <laughs> you know we're we're looking at that other project across the way over there. And sure. It, and it's going to be managed as a destination type project. Is that how this is being envisioned, or is it a? And don't get me wrong here. Mm -hmm. It's a strip mall that people can do what they want with, and whatever happens happens. How how do you visualize this whole thing coming? We, we'd like to have it managed as a destination location okay. that that is. We're we're trying to accommodate. Uh, really more of an entertainment retail user and and I mean the demand in the with all those captive people that you have yeah. year round below there that's that's exactly. kind of a cool deal. The demand in the valley that we're seeing is in the wine. Hmm. It, that's 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 what we're seeing as demand. So I gotta look into uh, yes. Well it's got kinda like the third street promenade. I mean that's my sister right. was down there, and so we've been down there numerous times, and so. Sure, so that that kind of a tenant mix is that's absolutely you, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think overall, I, I think it's a doable project. Um, we'd like to see the restrooms, um, and uh, I think it'll make a big difference once Caltrans does their landscaping in front. Yeah. Because that that little area there is kind of. It's helpful. Yeah. That yeah. Would be very helpful. Delightful. But <coughs> any other questions? Is the tan area like where the food truck, food trucks are? Is that what? What uh, kind of um, this, surface are we thinking? Like this, this yeah, tier, is that all paved or like crushed stone or brick or? We were thinking of, of, of some attractive courtyard mm -hmm. uh, landscape design with with outdoor pots and mm -hmm. that that kind of thing. So it's, it would that's be where the we're paving pavers or I think I think pavers with w that accommodate seating and but we wanted to we wanted to have very much of a garden you know whether it's whether if you've been to a beer beer hall in Germany kind of outdoor tasting feel bring the same thing to a kind of a wine related oh, deal yeah, we've yeah. Been there. yeah. I was just in Mexico at the Valley de Guadalupe, and one oh, yeah. of the wineries has a permanent food truck. Oh, and I think go. it sits on a cement, because I don't know what's required for, for permanent structures with food trucks, but all around was beautiful crushed stone, mm -hmm. um, interwoven greenery. It was like spectacular. Yeah. And I think that really could be, could be you know, an asset. So that's exactly the vision. Yeah. Just hope we can make I that would, happen. I would very much encourage this project. Yeah. I like it. Right. Uh, Rose, would that be something that the semi permeable pavers <coughs> would work in for drainage there? You know, um, with any of the impervious surfaces, they would still have to um, submit maintenance plan. That's how we would address all the oil and regular cleanup of things like that. Okay. So it, it's not, not doable. Right. Okay. And the food trucks, we have something in our, or we have to create that. We have nothing, but we <laughs> can do it through the development plan. We can create okay. the standards and things like that. So that's, that's the West, you know. And is well, then it'll be, we we, uh, we don't allow CEP. food trucks as a as a typical allow to go to sites except for 
um, like catering trucks and such can go to a site for 30 minutes because those are regulated by the state. But somebody can't just park a food truck all day at one location. That's not allowed in our code. However, through the development plan, you can allow this particular site to have food trucks and develop the standards for that. Okay, and they could be rotating food trucks? You could do whatever, okay. yeah, whatever standards you, you think are, are best, you know, we'll work with the applicant on that, but uh, uh, I don't think they have to be permanent. They just, you grant them the authority to have food trucks coming into this particular area and then, okay. you know, you leave it up to them to, to rotate or whatever. Are, yeah. what, yeah. I mean, what, what makes it successful for the food truck is that we would provide seating for their clients, we provide restrooms, and we provide parking, you know, and, and so someone that's potentially going to go have a glass of wine and, and sit down, oh, there's, there's actually something to eat, too. Uh, so that's, the, that's, good. that's the thought. Yeah, it's probably they want to look at the number of food trucks, I guess, against the foot traffic, you know. Right. Fully building out to four or five may not be the right way to start, but that's, that's your business. But yeah, we'll see. You'll see what the foot traffic t demands. Is, is there... Sorry for all these questions. A setback requirement for the food trucks up against Ellen's? Because I'm wondering if, if that food truck positioning is a screening for the backside of the restaurant. Yeah, we 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 look at that closely. Yeah, okay. I, I get. Yeah, I get where you're going on that. Okay. Wouldn't, yeah. that, wouldn't that be below? Isn't Ellen's up on the hill? This this land. No, they're below they're, on the, on the they're they are they're they're at a. Maybe a three foot higher grade exactly. elevation, but I just drive down right the there. back there once in a while. But I feel like I drop way down when right. I go to that parking lot. Um, you, you're you're exactly correct that that they were positioned there to help screen the back of the service area of Ellen's restaurant right now for uh, for our project. Right. Right. And when you're driving down Avenue of Flags in order to access your other point you have to do a u-turn uh no well if you're if you're south of this project and you're northbound on avenue of the flags you're in the right hand lane and you can turn you yeah. can turn into this project if you missed it then you can turn right at the at the uh, light there and right. still come into the project off 246 right but if you're coming off the highway from coming from I guess south. Yeah, you're going to have to do the U-turn. Just remember, you can't do a U-turn in that first opening. Right. right. You have to go to the second opening to do a, a legal U-turn. Okay. But right. So I guess my question is... Right. I turn the first one yeah. all the time. I do, too. <laughs> but my question is, what can we do for wayfinding signage uh, to help facilitate these types of destination projects. Does the first entrance, I believe you can turn left into it as you're going west on 246, or is there a boulevard there? I think it's at the place where, there, where you actually would have a ability it's to turn left, so right off the freeway. I think that happens. On 246, you can turn into the Shell Yeah, because yeah, you can turn into the Shell Station right, right. there. So there is actually a boulevard. The, it's it's, it's a painted right. median. Right. Um, so you can, at this question. point in time, turn in there. So if it stayed, then to answer your question, coming off the highway, mm -hmm. they would just come into the middle median and then be able to turn into, turn the, land. into the east entrance. Yeah. And, and the city doesn't provide wayfinding assistance for private businesses, just for major areas like wine tasting areas on the signs that you see in town. Mm -hmm. It's up to them to have their appropriate uh, yeah. signage on their project mm -hmm. to, to get people there yep. at, at their site. So... That's good. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. Okay. So the next, just the next step for so everyone, they will probably sit down with Andrea and go over some of these comments and then come in with a uh, formal final development plan submittal with the details that have been brought up by staff and by the commission, and we'll have a preliminary review to actually go into detail, and staff will ana analyze it and provide all of that detail yeah. when that uh, gets resubmitted. Great. Well, thank you very much for presenting. Yeah. Good luck with that project. Appreciate it. Uh, we don't have any written communications. Uh, planning commissioner comments? Only want to thank Mark for our news hawk.
Oh, you're welcome. That was that's very, very informative. Very good yeah. article. Janine does a very good yeah. uh, good job on, on those stories. Good about it because yesterday in Wall Street Journal they had a very similar one, not just on Bilton, but in, in general mm -hmm. what's happening with uh, the marketplace. So I followed up with that. Um, if nothing else? Oh, actually, oh. Go ahead. Too late. No. <laughs> um, I was reading through the master plan 2020, 2025. Um, curious on business licenses. I was. Do we have business license requirement? No, we do not, and we're not planning to move forward on business licenses. What we do is a one-time zoning clearance for forty-five dollars, and that shows that the business meets our municipal code, and they don't have to come each year and renew it. Because um, business licenses are more a revenue generator as opposed to a, you know, a zoning type of thing. So the the city has never wanted to move forward with business okay. licenses themselves. Anything else? Okay, church meeting at 6.35. <laughs> <Nice job. laughs>